Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming today. I'd like to thank everyone here in the audience, and I would like to thank everyone live streaming. So this is a first for Westfield, where we're having one of these CEP outreaches, and uh, we have a, a live stream going on. So for those of you who couldn't attend in person, it's nice to have you too. Uh, my name is Dan Howe, and I am the Vice President for Westfield LAX, and it's a pleasure to be here today with you. Um, I'll introduce my colleagues on the stage here. Uh, joining us today and uh, our, our ex experts who are going to touch on all the different disciplines are our Executive Vice President of Design, Beth Campbell. Our, our Vice President of Leasing at LAX, Mike Caro. Our uh, Commercial Operations Director, David Melanson. And our Assistant General Manager, Christopher Atkins. You know, we're, we're sitting in uh, uh, this room today talking about very exciting times at the city of Los Angeles and at LAX in particular. We have a little thing called the Olympics, which is on the horizon. And um, everybody is gearing up for that. This is going to be just a, a, a remarkable time in our history. So we're excited to be a part of that whole process. And anyone that works at the airports, for those of you who have, who have that experience, it's all about partnership on a lot of different levels. And so being here today, we, we talk about the partnership, and it talks about great physical space, a seamless digital journey, and great hospitality, world-class hospitality, something that's transcendent. That, that you only get at your finest food and beverage and retail locations. So everybody that's in the room here today, we are confident can deliver that experience. And that's why we've invited all of you to be here. So we're happy to have you. Um, little show of hands here in terms of partnership. Um, who here is currently in LAX as, as one of our partners? It's pretty good. All right. Who is not a partner at LAX right now. Wow, some, some fresh blood here, I think. This is really good. And who, who are uh, ACDBE partners, certified ACDBEs? Wow. And who has never been in airports before? <laughs> Keep those hands up a little longer. We're going to take some inventory here. Um, so really, uh, really a, a mix of, of great partners out there um, that we're excited to have today. Um, oh, and also, who is here directly from the brand? Do we have brand representation? OK. It's very good. So this is what, what's so exciting about being here today. It's all about the partnership, creating that great physical experience, the digital, seamless digital experience in, in the, in the world-class hospitality. Um, so today is just the beginning. We're going to tell you all about it. We are so excited to have all of you here. We're so excited to tell this story. So here's what's on tap today. We're going to have Beth come up and, and, and talk to you about the, the, the design piece. But most importantly, we're going to have Los Angeles World Airport CEO Deborah Flint come up and take us through the vision the excitement, where is LAX going? So this is going to be a great opportunity for us to see this. And then we're going to get into uh, design, and then we're going to be talking about the, the whole leasing part of the program, which is all about your role to come in and to help us tell a story, cobble together a great story in this space that we can't do without you. And then we're going to get into uh, ACDBE, talk a little bit more about the network that we've developed. So. Uh, getting into the future and what LAX is going to become, uh, th this is a real highlight for us. And, and we're so honored to have uh, Deborah Flint here today. And Deborah? Great. Good morning, everyone. Great thanks to the amazing team, our incredible partners here at Westfield. Thank you, Dan, so much. So I'm supposed to talk about the vision. 
But I, I had a plan for that vision, and then about two nights ago, um, it, it changed. Because obviously, you know, we've all been talking about the 2028 Olympic Games, and that's great. But when I heard that it was four degrees colder in Pyeongchang than it was in LA, I was like, it's time to go for the Winter Games, <laughs> right? Like, let's, let's double, let's double up. Let's really break some records around here. I want that. So, um, as I work on our de-icing plan, uh, it's a pleasure for, for, for us to be here for this forum. Thank you to each and every one of you, to your respective organizations. I know this is a commitment of your time, your resources, your energy, your passions and enthusiasm to learn about, contemplate, and hopefully participate in this opportunity and many other opportunities to come over the next few years at, at LAX. You know, as we you know, sit here today, LAX is the world's fourth busiest airport. We're the country's second busiest airport. You know, in the last year alone, we had almost 5 million more passengers, 11 new international routes just last year alone. And as said, the vision of the 2028 Olympic Games. And between now and 2028, we expect LAX to be truly transformed, transformed in all that we do and how we do it. So a few years ago, I set forth with my team to, to look and to establish a real vision for us as an organization and a strategy to achieve that vision of gold standard airports delivered. Gold standard airports delivered, meaning while we are, have been doing really well over the last several years with amazing new facilities like Tom Bradley and new commercial retail facilities in our airport, we've been climbing up the ranks you know, last year, we just learned a few weeks ago that we were the most improved mega airport in the entire world. That's fantastic. We love that. Yes. <laughs> but yet, every time I look at those metrics and those scores, we are still towards the bottom of the percentile. So we still have a long way to go to be that airport that others measure themselves by, to be mentioned in the list of airports that are leading and are known as world class. And we know that in order to do that, we have to have a very focused and clear strategy. And again, we're, we're on our way to doing that. One of our goals towards achieving that vision is to deliver world class facilities and a guest experience that is exceptional. And part of that is indeed transforming the infrastructure around LAX, transforming the ability to get into LAX, to navigate LAX, and get on your flight in a way that is certain, it's reliable, it's efficient. You have the choices that you want to have in terms of your technology or your human interactions as part of your experience. And so one of our first and more, most significant efforts in this regard is the award of our automated people mover system. The new front door to the airport a $4 billion investment that was approved by our Board of Airport Commissioners last night, approved by the Transportation Committee of the City Council, sorry, the Board of Airport Commissioners a week ago, and last night by our Transportation Technology Committee of the Airport Council. And this is an important project because of the way it's going to present LAX to the world, because of the benefits that it will bring to us in terms of people accessing and engaging with the airport, but it's also an important project for me to share with you because of how we did it and the values involved in our approach to this project as well. So before I talk a little bit more about that, I want to share with you what the future of LAX and its front door will look like. Presenting the future of LAX. Easier, faster, more efficient. Get to your plane on time without the stress. Easily transfer between terminals. Quickly access your rent -a car or connect with Metro Light Rail. All this becomes a reality with the new automated people mover. Relax above traffic and enjoy the view. Go from Metro to your terminal in 10 minutes or less. Trains arrive every two minutes. Easy on, easy off. Construction begins in 2018 with completion in 2023. It's the easier, faster, more efficient future of LAX. Learn more by visiting flylax.com. 
So this, this project, you have a very short snapshot there of, of what it looks like, and you can see some of the architectural features, uh, the level of investment that we're making, and how beautiful that system and it's, this new front door is going to be. But as importantly is actually the approach that we've taken on that project, a P3 30-year design, build, finance, operate, and maintain approach. And that approach will assure us of its performance, its reliability, its level of service. But even more so, one of the reasons we took this approach was because the values by which we wanted to develop this project were intrinsically important to us. The values of inclusivity for local, small, diverse businesses, the local workforce. And the team that has been awarded this project heard us loud and clear that indeed you had to meet all the fundamentals of being able to operate a system that has the capacity of carrying 10,000 passengers an hour, of to constructing a two and a quarter mile system that's very complicated. But again, as importantly, were those values that are critical to us at LAX. And the team that won, again, they listened, they heard and understood that as great as they could be, they had to reflect the values that were important to us. So we expect our partners today that we have and new partners in the future to understand that and to also fulfill past commitments and the commitments that they're going to make in the future to us. Not only is it important to us, to me personally, to our Board of Airport Commissioners, to our Mayor, to the City Council. I will share with you that that is the singular most popular question, present question, that I received from every single one of them when we made the selection of the team for the APM. So I assure you that is indeed part of our decision making um, all the way from myself to the City Council and our Board, and nothing else will do. And that's great. It's exciting. It's a tremendous opportunity, because when we think about what we do and when you are in the airport space, our mission is to serve the world, connecting people, places, and culture. Yes, that happens through the passengers or through our guests, but it more so happens through all of us that work every day, that partner every day in the environment that is the airport, one that is an amazing opportunity. It's amazing, but next year marks the anniversary of our groundbreaking on the Midfield Satellite Concourse, the project that we're here to talk about today specific to those opportunities. Um, Mayor Garcetti, our board president, many other community leaders were there to envision and to share what the most innovative concourse will look like when it opens in I'm still pressing for 2019. <laughs> I know my team is trying to convince me that we need to go early 2020, somewhere around that time frame. But when it opens, we have great expectations. So let me take a moment to share the last video with you of the MSC. Introducing LAX's new international concourse. Currently under construction, this 12-gate facility will be accessible via a spacious tunnel corridor with moving walkways from Tom Bradley International. The structure boasts a stunning curvilinear roof resembling a rolling ocean to complement the wave theme of Bradley. Interior design elements provide passengers with a variety of dining and retail options, more seats to relax in, work areas and pet relief stations, all within eyesight of departure gates. Scheduled to open in 2020, the new concourse will be a welcome addition to the international travel experience at LAX. So, beautiful architecture, beautiful design, and I know that when the interior is opened, it's going to be incredible as well. And I look forward very much to that day, still pushing for 2019. <laughs> we have great expectations of this concourse um, with, with this signature architecture. When we look at the experience in Bradley today, not only did we create and open a fantastic facility, we continue to innovate in that facility. 
Um, what's incredible is last year we pursued a designation as a TSA Innovation Airport, and we received that designation. So today, between CBP and the TSA, what do we have? We have the future of travel. I've always said we want the checkpoint of the future, the passenger experience of the future. And we already have some of that in place. We actually are prototyping a walkthrough airport security checkpoint in Tom Bradley. That's right, no more standing there holding up your hands within the case, actually a walkthrough open area. We have a fully tokenless biometric aircraft boarding gate, meaning you don't need your boarding pass on your phone, you don't need your boarding pass in your hand, all you need is your face. And you go to the boarding gate and smile or frown, grit, whatever you want to do. And facial recognition will, re will check you into the system and you walk onto the aircraft or you're denied if you're not supposed to be on that flight. The future is here today. And that is what we're sitting with in 2018. Imagine the future in 2020 or the end of 2019 when we open this facility. We expect the best of innovation the best in experience for our passengers. Things that we thought not possible. We want the big ideas and the dreams and the future of travel to be right here at LAX. So we ask that you do more than just imagine it, but bring that creativity and that idea and those passions from different places and different perspectives to us here at LAX. Passengers have incredibly high expectations, particularly for us as a global gateway. They experience ice skating in Munich. They experience butterfly gardens in Changi. We don't have the space for that. But we do have the creativity and the ingenuity and the passion to create new experiences at LAX that no other airport can deliver. This is the entertainment capital of the world. We are set to be the transportation and technology capital of the world right here. So I believe that it can all be possible. So yes, the expectations are great. Very great for you in this room, for your colleagues, for all of those that do business with us, no matter what it is, every element of the experience at LAX. We have great expectations that the ideas are fantastic, but also that the businesses are flawless in their operation and their execution, and that the jobs that are created are great ones for the people that serve and work with all of our passengers. But I'll also say to you that we have great expectations of ourselves at Los Angeles World Airports, as do our partners here at Westfield. We want, indeed, to have true partnerships. For those that do business with us, I want it to be an excellent experience. I want it to be one where you view us as partners in your success, and indeed, no matter what you do, you are successful. You're successful with your team members, with us, and that we, you know that you can count on us, that we're reliable, that we're certain, and we make it as easy it can be, as easy as it can be for you to do business in the difficult and complicated, complex arena that is airports. I thank you again for your time, your resources, your energy in being here. Thank you to this panel, um, the team here at Westfield that's going to walk you through a lot of information this afternoon. And I hope and expect that you will leave here excited about the opportunities, more informed and ready for the opportunities here at LAX through the MSC and even projects beyond as we set to transform the airport between now and 2028 and then 2030 when we host the world um, uh, Winter Olympic Games. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so thank you so much, Deborah. Who doesn't want to be a part of this? Really, it, it, it is something that is unprecedented in terms of uh, just the ambitiousness of this project in bringing this type of an experience, a fully dimensionalized experience, to the airport space. Uh, to deliver against that expectation that Deborah just laid out for us, it starts with great design. And we have just the person here to talk about a great design. Uh, Beth? Thank you. Yes, good morning. I am indeed Beth Campbell. I'm the head of Westfield Design. 
And actually, I'm just going to spend a few minutes, uh, maybe about five minutes, just talking you through the philosophy behind the design concepts that we are bringing forward for you. Um, and the goal is, is absolutely to, to build on the vision that uh, Deborah was just placing forward. But the fact is, is to give you some insights to help you to come forward with the strongest uh, solution for your bid and your proposal. So, um, but before I get into that, I thought maybe it would be helpful if I actually talked briefly about Westfield Design so you can understand where we're coming from. Um, essentially, we're known as mall developers, right? But the fact is, is we're much broader than that. Um, what I've been able to build in the last few years with our team here at Westfield Design Studio, we believe that we are the stewards or the champions. We are responsible for curating impactful engagement through the built environment. Say that again, impactful engagement through the built environment. Experiential design is critical, but it's about how do we engage and how do we bring that forward. And so what we have is a group of very strong architects, interior designers, graphic designers, and strategists. Um, there's just under 90 of us here in LA and spread actually across the country that are focused on obviously the retail. Century City is a great example of that, very obvious choice. Um, we also have a group that does uh, mixed use, which is master planning and architecture, big complex, we're doing residential we're doing office towers, we're doing hotels. And so then, of course, the most pertinent one and the important one today is the team here with me is our aviation design team. They're an integrated part of the airports, Westfield Airports Group. And so what we do, it's about, it's not just about um, creating a building or coming up with a solution. We're actually trying to create a relationship. Through the built environment, we're trying to curate and help people foster memories. And so we're challenging you to be a part of that today with us. And for me, to be able to do that, I find is you have to find the right talent. Then you have to empower them and get out of the way. Give them the freedom to do their job and let them do what they need to do. And so this is where you find innovation. This is where creative solutions live. OK, if we could jump in, I think we have a uh, master plan here that I'm going to start by walking you through the master plan at a very high level, and then we'll get into some quick details about each of our districts. But let's just start with some brass tacks. The reality is 750,000 square foot concourse. We have over a 1,000 foot long pedestrian connector and 27 concession opportunities with just over 28,000 square feet for concessions. I'm going to be really clear right now. This is not just a leasing conversation. Leasing is critical, but the fact is, is that we're looking to you to come in and partner with us and to continue to build. We have the development team here at Westfield. We have Lawa, who does phenomenal work. You're the third leg of that stool. We need your help to complete the circle of, of truly connecting with our travelers. And so if you back up, and there was a lot of hands here familiar with um, Tom Bradley, the fact of the matter is, is it's standing today, it's the crown jewel of the American travel. It is such a fantastic facility, and what we're doing here is only to enhance that. It's to complement that. So the fact is, is that we have this long concourse. It is very well thought out. It is meticulously thought out and integrated with our leasing team. And so we'll start to get into some of those details. So here, if you look at the plan, actually, what we have is three distinct districts. And so what we're bringing to bear is our philosophy, the core of what we've accomplished here, is that as designers, we believe in a globally savvy approach. That means we need to understand technology. We need to understand trends. But true success as architects, true success is found when we are able to blend authentically local flavors. So we want the global with the authentically local, and that's what we're trying to accomplish here. So the, the core of what we're, we're targeting is we are bringing more of LA into LAX. And so with that, the first experience, our guests arrive, and they walk into this new concourse, and they show up at that kind of lavender purple area. That's where they walk in. This is their first experience. This wants to be the wow moment. This is where they come in, and it's called our civic center. Then if you progress, progress north, which is left along your drawing, um, they go to mid-city. Mid-city is you're coming from downtown LA, you're heading westward. This is still kind of that city, and it still has a big pace to it, but it's, it's tempered a little bit. It's, it's as if you're going to, like, the sidewalks are a little bit wider philosophically. It gives you a little bit more room to breathe. And then the, the progression uh, culminates when we get to the west side. Those of us from LA love the west side. Um, this is our ocean communities. This is obviously a much calmer, cooler, uh, very hip vibe, OK? So this is our progression, and this is how we're going to walk through it. Now, if you'll indulge me for just a few minutes, I have two slides for each one. Let's jump over to the Civic. And here we are. Um, this is our main hub. 
the reality is this is where our travelers first enter the concourse, and we really want to wow them. This is to reflect downtown. We want high-rise metal and glass. The fact is we want very sleek materiality here. Um, and then the fact is the vibrant signage. And so you pull this all together, and there's a lot of natural light and energy. If you look at the rendering that was uh, created for this, tremendous amount of natural light and energy. Buzzing with energy is the key here. So this embraces the history and charm of downtown, sleek lines, city high rises, but it's that industrial glamour of bronze, brick, and mortar. The key takeaway, avenues of energetic experience here at the Civic Center. Okay, then we progress to the north, which is our next. Um, the next progression is the mid-city. This is much more artisanal with a lot of creative influences. This still features of the dark metals and glass, but we went with accents, warmer accents. We went with bronze, we went with wood. We actually, you start to see greenery and some, you know, some lightness to the space. We wanted this to feel like a natural progression as you left downtown. Uh, we didn't want it to stark contrast, but we wanted to have a natural evolution to the experience. So if you look at the rendering here, you'll see that this is inspired. This is truly the center of the, the progression. This is, you know, our city, um, century city type Hollywood. This is influenced by art and music and film studios, very urban chic. Um, savvy adaptation of materials, but yet sophisticated applications of wood and artisanal features, part of our soulful journey. So then next we jump into our oceans community. This is the hip, cool vibe. This is where everybody kind of lets their hair down. This is relaxed. I want you to think about small um, boutique brands, smaller retails, very artsy and playful. The roof and the ceiling actually start to design, uh, were designed to mirror the waves of the ocean inside this space. So if you look at the rendering that shows this, um, this is our ocean communities is inspired uh, actually by the genre and vintage and eclectic qualities, actually even kind of evoking some cheeky humor, if you will. We have some graffiti and some ad hoc building elements. Grassroots, free spirited. Um, the fact is this is start to embrace that indoor outdoor lifestyle that is West LA. Okay, so that's what we have. We have our three communities. We have Civic Center, we have Mid-City, and Ocean Communities, three distinct districts. This is our effort as we're bringing more of LA into LAX. Please understand, as designers, we wanna be provocative. That is literally why we get out of bed in the morning. But the, but the fun reality here is the tight, tight network with leasing. We have to have provocative, but it has to be practical. So as you start to work on your proposals, you'll see that it's very well integrated between the leasing and the design side. We have provocative and practical. So this is where I'm going to leave you. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to join us. I want you to be innovative. We want you to challenge conventional thinking. I want you to explore. Be trendsetters. Influence. Make a difference. We want you to actually design based thinking should be applied here. Join us in making this more of a transformational um, than a transactional. We want this to be about relationships and build on the engagement and we're looking forward to partnering with you on this going forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Beth. Um, every time I hear our, our design folks talk, I'm always struck by the passion they have for this, and then they're just talent. It's, it's just, it's amazing. It's great to be a part of Westfield and to be able to partner with all of you to try to deliver this. Um, in order to make it fully immersive, in order to make it special, it, it requires your efforts too. And this is how we can complete the story, is through what you're going to also bring to the table and offer in terms of design. That's what's truly gonna set us apart. So we look forward to working with each and every one of you as this journey continues. Um, now, speaking about the, the spaces, now you really need to know what are the packages? What's available to us? What, what are we actually going to be designing against here? So in order to do that, we have Mike and David who are going to come up and join us. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's uh, great to see this turnout. You know, I, I can see how different this is um, to me, so it's got to be very different to you. I've never in 20 years of retails, uh, airport retailing been a part of something like this, so thank you for coming out. This is really what we're looking for is a, a different approach. Uh, we want participation. We want quality of a, uh, participation. So we've set up three different types of packages uh, that are going to be um, 
First one is going to be a limited CEP. Tibbet has done extremely well. The operators have done a great job. This is an extension of that building. We want to see that building kind of flow into the next one. And so what we've done is set up packages that will be exclusively set out to operators of the, uh, the existing building to, to uh, bid on. Then we're going to have packages that are exclusively for ACDBs. Again, we want to increase the participation. We're hoping to get some new blood in and um, also give opportunity for exclusively ACDBs. But then we're going to have uh, an open-to-all package as well as a bunch of, the, the majority of the spaces will be individual open-to-all. So again, participation. We want local. We want entrepreneurs. We want big businesses. We want local. We want small. You know, this is the opportunity to, to be able to really get in there and show us what you, you have and what you can bring from the city. And, and you've heard from Beth, you, you see LA Focus, the, the leasing is, is united with the design. This is all about bringing in LA. You've got to scream LA with what you're doing. And this doesn't mean you have to bring brands that are only you know, LA local. It means think about the street and see what works on the street and those synergies in your neighborhoods where local, national, international all work together. We want to bring that into the airport. We want to bring what the customer wants. So think about the, the traveler, uh, the international traveler, but also that LA-based customer. What are their expectations? Farm to table, healthy, you know, desserts, coffee. You know, you know, everyone wants a greasy burger when they're on the road. You know, that's something that you, you have, to, have to bring in. Uh, get creative. You know, bring it on. Do something different from a, from a product standpoint, from you know, the design standpoint. Um, you know, technology. Don't don't just stop at the product. Don't just stop at the uh, the design. But you know, meet the customer where they want to be. And technology is important to this. Um, you know, we're all so dependent on it, and it's part of our personal lives and our our uh, work lives. As Carla saw earlier today, when her phone died while we were talking, <laughs> went looking for a plug. Um, technology is here to stay. Tell us what different you're going to do with technology and how you can meet their needs. Westfield is, is investing in this as well. We're looking for those opportunities where we can help the whole program. So how do we bring it all together and help you do better with yours, your businesses? You know, we're looking for that holistic approach to help that customer on their journey uh, you know, from the airport, from their home to the airport, to the plane, and to wherever they're landing. You know, we want to help you guys do better, and we want partners, operators, who are going to embrace that uh, embrace technology, embrace the, the way of the future with us. So now, what you've all been waiting for, I'll jump into the packages and the spaces. The first package, package one, it's the first of six that are limited CEPs. There's two units in this. There's a travel essentials and a specialty retail. The travel essentials space is in the mid-city area. Travel essentials, I think we all know what that means. It's everything you've forgotten, everything you think you need for the plane, and maybe some gifts. Then the specialty space, this is a civic center that Beth talked about. This is the area where we're going to try and keep everyone and really create some synergy and, and create a place that people want to be. So this has to be something that really resonates with the inter international passenger, it has to have a great look, um, can be local, can be national, international. It just has to be quality and has to be something that, that really shows well. Thank you, Mike. My name is David Melanson, Director of Commercial Operations here. I'm going to journey through to package two, but first, what I want to touch on, what Mike touched on, there are three packages. In your trifold, it's listed very easily. Left column, first, limited CEP. Middle column, ACDBE only. And then third is our open to all. So let's, let's, let's take the journey through package two. Package two has three spaces in total. One specialty leasing, two travel essentials. When you think about the first specialty leasing space, or specialty space, as you, as you journey through the new international terminal, what Deborah alluded to in the visual, and you ascend up, the first thing you see in the main hall is going to be that specialty space. So what would you want to bring to that? One thing that we're thinking about is, let's think sophisticated. Let's think sexy. Let's bring sexy back. Don't be afraid to bring sexy back in here. <laughs> Some good looking people in here. What makes you feel good when you put it on? It's that. For the travel essentials, we all know what that looks like. 
We've all been to a lot of airports. Some look good, some look great. These should look better. So for the first travel essential space, it's in the Civic Center, which basically just means it's in the main hall. Everyone's going to see it. What is that going to look like? It's going to look sophisticated. It's going to look affluent. That second travel essentials, as you journey north through the ocean communities, think about going to Abbey Kinney. What does it look like? It's a cool feel. It's a hip feel. It's a younger feel. Those are, those are the three spaces. That's what we're looking to bring for package two. Package three, um, possibly my, my favorite package if I'm allowed to have one, because I am a foodie. This is two units, a full service uh, bar and restaurant that will be a limited CEP. And the great thing about this is you may have seen in the, the renderings and the video, when you come up the escalator, the first thing you see is this bar space. It really has high windows, it has natural light. It, it feels like LA when you're sitting there. This, this unit really has to be something special from LA. There's, again, two units, one's a restaurant, one's a bar. You can share a kitchen. They can be two separate concepts. Uh, they can be one concept across the two. Um, but whatever you bring, again, LA, local, sophisticated, great service. Um, think about tapas in the bar and full serve restaurant on the other side or you know, get creative. Again, it's, it's open for you to, to bring us great ideas and there's so much out there in the city to, to pull from. Um, just think cool, hip, great vibe. This is the place to, to see and be seen. What's next? Package number four. Package four is coffee. We all know what coffee looks like. We know national brands. We know local brands. We know what coffee smells like. You know, you can walk through a certain or, or past the coffee shop or through a terminal. You can almost close your eyes and smell it. I'm going to give you a visual. You just, you know what that smells like. You guys know what that local or national coffee brand smells like. Well, we're not going to hold you to just bring in that, that national brand that speaks and resonates to everyone. If that's what it is, great. If you want to get cool, you want to get local, you want to get unique, you want to get trendy, you want something that is going to resonate with a new demographic, great. <laughs> uh, package five, this is a, a limited CEP as well. It's one quick serve restaurant in the Civic City, Civic Center, top of the escalators. It's going to be a very visible anchor space to the food court. Um, this can be a national brand or it can be a very strong local, but think about quality of product, speed of service, and quality of service. You know, bring something special here. Again, lots of opportunities to see um, in the city and, and look to bring in. There's lots of potential and looking forward to what you bring us. Package number six. Every time I see the package, I always think about carbohydrates. We're in LA. I, I like to eat kale. My wife wants me to eat kale. I don't eat enough kale. So for package six, when you think about, when, when, when you think about this package, it's actually adjacent to the coffee shop that we mentioned in package four. So imagine if you have a cup of coffee, what would you want to complement that? If you aren't thinking about complimenting it with anything, what would you impulsively want to purchase? I always think if my three-year-old daughter walked by something and tugged on my jacket and pointed to it, and told me to buy it, well, she tells me to buy it. It's forced for people out here who have kids, you know, when they walk by something, you're forced to buy it. What would that be? That impulsivity, a compliment to coffee, a donut. <laughs> it's that. Thank you. And uh, there's nothing wrong with your, your uh, cameras there. We're going to skip seven and eight, and we're going to wait for uh, Christopher Hollywood Atkins to cover those in his section. So uh, this, this is package nine. It's uh, two units. It's a coffee shop and a, a quick serve, side by side in the mid-city. I don't need to explain coffee because it was explained. <laughs> so think about how the two work together. You're, you're going to have both. What product do you put in with the coffee you know, to, to also serve the food needs? And how do you complement that with the, the quick serve restaurant? You know, it can be artisan breads. It can be healthy. It can be uh, some made to order, some grab and go. Again, bring us your ideas, but think about how these work together. Since I'm the only one that stands between you guys and Chris Hollywood Atkins, <laughs> I'll, I'll be as succinct as I can possibly be. But this is, this, is the, this is the exciting opportunity because 
for this, this, this third phase, again, in your trifold, limited ACDBE, open to all, these 13 spaces are individually packaged, but aren't limited to just be individually packaged. They can be bundled together. I saw by a, a show of hands earlier when Dan mentioned it, there are operators, there are brands in this room. How do those two marry together? There are people in here who want to do direct deals. This is your chance to actually do that. So of the 13 spaces, what's represented, we have QSRs, we have travel essentials, specialty, we have a spa, we have a restaurant and bar. However, we're introducing one additional flexible space to the new international terminal. The term is pop-up. It just basically means it's flexible. You can move in and out fluidly. You aren't committed to a five, seven, 10 year deal. You can be committed to a six month, one year or two year deal. But you have the ability to catch that trend, put it in, capitalize on it, and then get out. So with that new introduction, I would like to turn it back over to Dan, who will do the lovely introduction for Chris Hollywood Atkins. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mike and David. Um, on behalf of everyone here in the audience and those live streaming, uh, we all want to thank you for bringing Sexy back. <laughs> so appreciate that. Um, feels good. Um, so, and, and also, I want to compliment you guys on your tight choreography. Uh, last night, these guys were practicing. It's like Olympic ice dancers. So it was, it was really something to see. Um, so uh, he's already been alluded to and introduced. Um, next up, uh, talking about something very near and dear to us, our ACDBE partners, key partners, valuable partners of ours, is Christopher Atkins. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. My name is Christopher Atkins, also known as Hollywood Atkins, thanks to a gentleman sitting in this room. I want to say thank you to, or not thank you, I want to say good morning to the partners, good morning to the brands, the operators, good morning to all my Westfield alumni that I see in the crowd today. Um, as the assistant general manager, it is my role, obviously, to generally assist three very humbling operations professionals at the airport, and what we do is we deliver a world-class experience to every single passenger every single day. I've also got the pleasure of being dubbed as Westfield's West Coast Coordinator for the Network Program. What the Network does is it provides a forum for our ACDB opera, or excuse me, partners to come in and, and really communicate with us and get the help they need to achieve their goals. The Network was set up on four pillars. We wanted to educate, facilitate, learn from, and recruit our ACDV partners. Today I'm going to focus on those last two, uh, starting with learning from. In the inaugural year in 2017, we had four network events. From those events, we really got a chance and opportunity to learn from and to listen to our partners. We learned about how much time and effort it takes to align your financing, to align your partners, your brands, and if need be, to finish your certification. This year, the journey continues. What Westfield wants to do is expand this ACDB program, the network program, and bring more partners on through recruitment. That being said, let me get to the two packages we have for offer for our ACDB partners. Packages Seven and eight, respectively, are a QSR restaurant and a specialty retail in the Civic Center in the Mid-City. Both very highly trafficked and highly visible areas. And as David said, bring, bring the sexy back to these spaces. We want to see something compelling. We want to see something interesting, something daring, something very LA, kind of like coming in with a, uh, a fancy tie knot on a, for a conference. We want to see something that makes you stop in your tracks and say, this is Los Angeles. I'll remember this. I want to come back and see this again. The 
Before we started today, I was asked the question, what, what is it about the ACDV world that does it for me? Why do I want to speak about this today? So I'll, I'll take you back a couple years. When I first arrived here, I was at a networking event and just by chance happened to meet two gentlemen who are in the network that are ACDV partners. And hearing their story was nothing short of an inspiration to me. And for myself, being a fan of the underdog, being a fan of uh, someone who, who feels like they need to strive to keep up with the rest of the flow, that was, it, it sucked me right in immediately. Being here for a couple more years, I got to hear stories from other partners from how they went on from their former jobs and are kind of doing the same thing in their own business now. Or a gentleman who had worked at the airport he was actually in security and saw how much C's candy flies off the shelves and figured he too would have a C's candy store. And that gentleman today does. Very impressive. We want to recruit more, more people in. If, if you're on the brink of getting your certification, today's your day. We have a networking table for the networking gentleman that'll be <laughs> at our networking event just after this outreach event today. Come talk to us. Let us help you. Let us get you over the line with that certification, introduce you to the resources you need, and put you in contact with other people who are, have already gone through exactly what you're going through. The things that you see as being impossible have already been solved by people in this room today. So come join us, please. Thank you. Well, that's um, Christopher Hollywood Atkins. Um, I, I will say, when you do get a chance, make it a point to go up. If you haven't met Chris, uh, introduce yourself. Uh, take a look at the tie. The tie knot is very special. You can take a selfie. Is that OK, too? OK, it took a long time to tie this. You've never seen anything quite like it. And Anwar, I want to thank you for sitting in the front row, because I've enjoyed your socks today. So, But you know, most importantly, taking everyone through the, the entire journey here, um, from uh, CEO Deborah Flint of Lawa, um, the, the, the vision, um, Beth taking us through a very inspired design conceit and program, uh, Mike and David taking us through the leasing program, and Chris taking us through ACDBE. Uh, we truly hope that you've gotten a, a good kind of a, an understanding of, of the magnitude of this project. How exciting is this? And we're, we're so excited that you're here today to be a part of it, that you have interest in our project, um, this is a great opportunity. We're going to be having networking opportunities in the rooms outside these doors. We're going to have all the major Westfield disciplines there. So if you want to talk construction, design, operations, ACDBEs, wh whatever it might be, we're going to have our experts sitting at those tables ready to engage. And then also, uh, it's, it's going to be a nice, comfortable space for all of you to network and to start to build those, those coalitions, uh, foster those relationships. So the next 60 days are gonna be uh, very important here for, for all of you to just to work together and, and start to ideate around this. Um, so before we go to the networking, I just wanna step you through some of the key milestones that are gonna be coming up. So Friday, April 20th, uh, that is going to be the CEP uh, outreach, or when it hits the street, and it's available for, for all of you. Um, and then you've got until June 20th, so good two-month span of time here uh, for you to formally respond uh, to the CEP. Our goal is then to, uh, by October 1st, award the winners. So a lot coming up, um, a lot of opportunity though, and a lot of time still for all of you to partner and start to build those coalitions, build and around everything that you've heard today. Hopefully you're walking away with a good handle on, on what we're hoping to see and, and we're looking forward to partnering with you on. So uh, we wanna thank each and every one of you sincerely. Thank you to our panel. Uh, thank you to CEO Deborah Flint, all of you live streaming, and all the people behind the scenes that help us put this event together. It was a lot of work, so thank you all. And uh, we look forward to meeting you during the networking session. So thank you very much.